what you're about to experience are my opinions and truths. I'm suggesting their possibilities for you to consider, in which you can then come up with your own logical conclusions. things want and why are they here you still don't get it do you boy they have recruited the rich and the powerful they're running the whole show wake up they're all about you all around you blind us to the truth take a look they are safe as long as they are not discovered i don't know what they are or where they came from but we gotta oh, stop them stay away from me put these on they have us look at them they're everywhere We have no other choice. I don't like this one bit. Leave it alone, man. It ain't none of my business, ain't none of yours. We have been lulled into a trance. Listen to what I'm saying to you. We're in trouble. The whole world's in trouble. Control us! You're sending some kind of signals on the TV sets. I've got one that can see. Mama don't like tattletale. Now we start spilling some blood. Let's go! Push button. <laughs> I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick it. And I'm all out of bubblegum. to everyone out there in the decoding world my name is logan and this is decode your reality and today we're going to be breaking down and decoding the 1988 cult classic john carpenter movie titled they live notice it came out in 1988 of all years folks it's that Master number 88. If you've been following his great work and research, all that 88 is all over time travel. And this movie has time travel in it. And is time travel a thing of our reality just hidden from us? I, I, I personally believe so. Now, a lot of you have been waiting on this decode. Folks, I've had this on the shelf for many, many months. And I'm gonna tell you and show you why I decided just three days ago or four days ago to pull it off the shelf. It's gonna be included in the intro. So as I always say, slip on a pair of headphones, get immersed in this presentation. This is gonna be a lengthy one, folks. But as I say, I promise you, the time you spend and invest in this decode will be absolutely worth the time you invest in this decode. This is probably one of the most important decodes I have ever currently done. I believe there's a lot of truth to this and let's break it down and get into it. Here are the topics 
of conversation during this presentation in the zero position the intro and again why i decided to pull this decode off the shelf i'm going to tell you why and i'm going to show you how my life is completely scripted and rigged and i'm just following my code and i'm just going to support that in the number one position we're going to break down, down the subliminal messages and this is going to once again support that man is not running the show folks man is just simply being used there's no way man could sit there and consciously do all the things I'm about to show you. They would never get the movies out. They would never get music out. Too many moving parts. Number two, we're going to break down some of the movie scenes to further that support. Number three, lizard control. Lizard control. Number four, the short story by Ray Nelson is what inspired John Carpenter to do this movie, They Live. It's eight o'clock in the morning. So we're going to break that down a little bit. Number five, the star of They Live, starring Roddy Roddy Piper. He was the character known as John Nada. Number six, the man who was behind it, the director, producer, John Carpenter, who's done other movies like Halloween. I got that decode coming out as well, folks. Folks, it's all freaking scripted. Not Man's not scripting it. Number seven, we're going to break down and include Superman, the comic book character, the originators of it, the movie... Folks, it's all included with They Live. Number eight, the title is called Tin Alligator. Number nine, the series V. There was a series that came out in the early 1980s. I caught it when I was a kid, 1983-84. It spun off into other television events as well. But V is all about the visitors and reptilians as well. And then, of course, number 10, what did you see? during this presentation so folks here we go this is the very reason why i pulled they live off the shelf and decided to work on this presentation which is what you're seeing here today and so stick with me i promise i'm going to go somewhere with this this is an album from this band called halloween it was a like a heavy metal band from germany and i i listened to heavy metal when i was a kid i'm a rocker at heart i was born in 1973 all through high school i was gravitating towards rock and heavy metal and all that kind of stuff those are my roots and this album i had bought on cassette when i was when i was growing up and this album just popped into my life just four days ago out of nowhere and that's why i'm saying like if you have a song that comes into your mind out of nowhere or an album like where did that come from you should be decoding it because i'm going to show you why you should be doing that because this is perfect proof and support of how i ended up decoding they live it's based off this or this is what got me triggered and this album halloween walls of jericho is an album that was released on December 1st, 1985. And of course, I'm always going to check that against the cards and, you know, the days on the calendar. But nonetheless, the December 1st card is the four diamonds. Let me be really transparent. Here is the boilerplate chart for the cards of illumination. So I want to be really transparent. So I'm not trying to pull the wooly over your eyes. Here are the 12 months running across the top and then the 31 days running horizontally on the left hand side and here is december 1st it's the four diamonds card and it is the release date of this album which this is the 30th card in the deck there it is the four diamonds in the natural lineages of the cards is the four diamonds if you want these graphics by the way just send me an email and i'll send them to you i've sent them to thousands of people my email is decode your reality at gmail.com and i'll be sure to send them to you but nonetheless there it is this album the release date tied to the four diamonds which if you've been following this work this is one of the jack-in-the-box cards and it's the 30th card in the deck and it matches to this word the gnostics refer to as the god it's the demiurge demi meaning two the god that runs duality and you know of course if you follow theology the walls of jericho is in the old testament so it's really kind of fitting but let's go somewhere with this because on this album folks on this album there was a song, song number three, of course, and that's Pi 3, put that down the hole we go. There was a song called Reptile. I have it circled there. And the length of the song, three minutes 
and 45 seconds. And, you know, why? how did this get me into they live reptile? Reptilians live amongst us. They live. It's all connected, folks. And this is what triggered me to pull they live off the shelf. It was this album just four days ago that popped into my mind. And I saw that reptile and I was like, wow, there it is. And of course, when I decode, I this is one of the layers that I do. I take the elements of the periodic table because these are bridges. They tell us the story. There's pictures. There's boiling points, melting points. There's a lot of nuggets in these elements if you're new to this. But nonetheless, three minutes and 45 seconds is tied to these two elements, lithium and rhodium. Lithium and rhodium. And, you know, when you really break that down, folks, you do the alchemy of lithium and rhodium based off the length of this song called Reptile using the trusty calculator. There it is. The alchemy of lithium and rhodium ends up becoming 109.922. And of course, using numberempire.com right here to the left, look at what number that is in relation to the primes. It's not just any prime number, folks, the 109. It's the freaking 29th prime number. And 29, if you've been following, I showed this in the Vatican. This is what runs the Vatican and all religions and all that stuff down here, unduality. It's the Gnostic demiurge called Yaldabaoth. Yaldabaoth, linked to this song called, found from, we started with the song called Reptile. We're talking about reptilians, folks. Wait till you see the connections. This is what triggered me to do this decode. Here's one of the founding members of Halloween, Kai Hansen. Notice his date of birth is January 17th. The January 17th card, folks is the 10 diamonds here it is the road january and the 17th it's the 10 diamonds not only is it the 10 diamonds it's the 36 card in the deck and then we bring in another layer to add on to show you that man would have to include that i mean do you think this guy's trying to mock you or pull the woolly over your eyes this guy right? no it, the guy plays music But yeah, here we are decoding and look at what card it is in the medicine deck. The 52 cards using animals, insects, reptiles, etc. It's the freaking lizard card. The 36 card is the lizard tied to the 36 card, which is this guy's birthday. And he, this guy is the founding member of this band called Halloween. How about that, folks? Reptile, the song Reptile. Now it was written by this guy right here. Weekath or Wycath. And we're going to get into him in a second. But notice here's Kai Hansen's full name in numerology, his birth name. It's the number 50. The number 50th card is the alligator card. Once again, a reptile tied to this element right here called tin. The merger of worlds. Notice the atomic weight of tin, the most abundant. It has several. It's the 119, the mirror of the 911. So this guy right here, not only does he have a numerology of 50 tied to the alligator or reptile card, but his freaking birth card is a reptile, the lizard. And we're talking about reptile off this album, which has nothing to do with They Live, but has everything to do with They Live. Now, here's the guy who actually wrote the song Reptile. And this is, you know, it's, again, folks, life is completely fixed and scripted. It's all part of the code. Just playing out your part. So enjoy the ride. Michael Ingo Yochim Weekath. Probably pronounced that wrong. But look at what his total numerology is. It's an 84. 84 is tied to the 36 element called Krypton. We're going to be getting into Krypton. We got Superman coming up, folks. Folks, it's all tied together. Let me tell you. Krypton has several weights. One of them is 84. This is a big one. 36 is its protons. There's that lizard card. So these, this guy 
through his name numerology, ends up landing on the Lizard card, and he's tied to the founding, other founding member of the band, Kai Hansen, who not only has the alligator and the reptile card through his name numerology, but his birth card is tied to that 36 Lizard card. And they both were on an album that had a song called Reptile, which is linked to the Gnostic Demiurge, Yaldabaoth. You think, you think the, the, they are mocking you, trying to pull the wooly over your eyes? trying to do a ritual in front of you. Folks, it's absolutely ludicrous for anybody to believe that kind of stuff. It's all part of the code. I'm gonna keep saying it. It's all part of the freaking code. So it was really this, this movie, and we're gonna get into the salon, it's based off of television because as you notice in the background, it's cable. If you haven't seen the movie, folks, I, you know this decode may not make a lot of sense, but if you're a fan of the movie, you know what Cable 54 is. The, ex the explosion on top of the building was when Roddy Piper blew up the satellite dishes that was putting out the transmission, the hypnotic trance. Of course, it's a cable station. Cable, and why the 54? I'm gonna break that down and show you why the 54, folks. It's tied to this element in the corner to the far right called Xenon X, like our X chromosomes. The four fixed signs in astrology, the ox, lion, eagle, and man, the X, the X-Men. Well, Xenon has several atomic weights. One of them is 130. And it's a direct match of the word television. How about that, folks? So you, th you think that John Carpenter and company, because again, folks, this is just one piece. Wait till, there's so many moving parts. You'd have to, you'd never get a freaking movie out, folks. If you were sit there and consciously say, we're gonna try to mock people. We're gonna try to pull a woolly over their eyes. So everything on the, cause folks, you know, like I said, I lived in Hollywood. I know what goes into a movie. I know people that are producers. I know what goes into it. The whiteboarding and the storyboard. Folks, you'd never get a movie done if you have to sit there with all these layers that I'm showing you. Not, it's not, it would be impossible. The code is fixed. That's why all these things are linking up this way. 130, 130, 54, 54. It's, it's right there, folks. You can't miss it. And this is using the English, the numbers one through 26, A through Z, television. The other element that's tied to the 54 is this element right here called manganese, which means magnet, magnetic. Think about it logically, magnetic signal. Magnetic signal, because manganese has an atomic weight of 54. Now I wanna break, I wanna show you how important this is because here is this element. Now I want you to use your common sense and logic. The Royal Society of Chemistry they use pictures for every element, symbols. This 25th element, which has an atomic weight of 54, tied to that 54 on the cable 54, the subliminal hypnotic spell they were putting out through the news, keeping you in a trance. This manganese element has this little symbol right here. It's a cow with a magnet over the top of it. Why, why would they put this there? Now, according to the Royal Society of Chemistry, they're gonna tell you it's an antique electromagnet in a cow, and they're gonna say the electromagnet is because manganese may have gotten its name from the Latin word magnet. Of course it did. The cow reflects the importance of the element as a food supplement for grazing animals. What a cr This is a complete crock. This may be true, but the real reason why this picture is here, folks, is because this is a representation of us. We represent the cow. We're cattle. And we're being magnetically harvested. We're being used for our energetic food. I, I, I've been continually saying that, and I've been supporting it now, not just in one instance, but I have over 100 videos, and many of those videos are supporting us being used as food. So there it is, 54 magnetic Xenon 
This is the voice in your head. This is, this is what uh, David Gilmore and Pink Floyd sang about. There's someone in my head, but it's not me. Brain damage off of Dark Side of the Moon. Yeah, the little voice in your head that's talking right now. You don't own that. It owns you. Now, you may not like that. You may not like what I have to say on that, but just as I can't prove that you're in control of your voice, you can't prove me that you're in control of it. But I can assure you folks, there are plenty of things out there telling us that the little voice in your head, that thing owns you. So let's get into the subliminal messages of this movie, folks. And and oh my word, did this blow my doors off. Last night, I decided to watch this movie again just in case I missed some things. And I, I'm sure I did because the movie's over an hour. It's like, you know, 94 minutes long. And, you know, there are a lot of moving parts to it. But the big takeaways that I saw, this is this scene right here. And I've got the timestamp of when this scene happened. This is the first time that Roddy Piper puts on the sunglasses. 32 minutes and 42 seconds maybe a give or take a second because he slides them on his face 32 minutes and 42 seconds the first time he slides them on his face and he recognizes that the world is not what it appears to be because then he looks at this sign right here as he puts the sunglasses on and notice the timestamp circled 32 minutes and 43 seconds one second after him slipping the sunglasses on at the 42nd, 42nd mark there, 32 minutes and 42 seconds, it's 32 minutes and 43 seconds, and the word obey appears on the billboard. He takes the glasses off and something else appears, and I'm going to show you that, but notice what the word equals in the English. It's the number 47. And again, folks, this is how, I mean, as a producer, do you realize what would have to go into making a movie on top of trying to mock you by doing what I'm about to show you right here, just to make sure you get it all in sequence, just to make sure you get all the words in sequence. This is what would have to go into this folks. It's absolute ludicrous thinking, thinking man would ever do this like this consciously. So the word obey is 47. The timestamp when he saw this for the first time, 32 minutes and 43 seconds. There it is. When you add that up right there, 32 plus 43, get out your calculators. You're going to get the number 75. And of course, you know, I'm going to go bring it into the string of pi because we are creating pi down here in the world of Wonderland. The numeric string 75 appears at the 47th decimal digit of pi. How about that, folks? So you see what I'm saying of what would have to go into on that layer just alone right there, the timestamp of the movie, getting it right exactly at that time to integrate it into pi, integrate it into numerology, folks, that is absolute ridiculous thinking. Man's not doing this. 75 from the timestamp of when he saw this for the first time, it occupies space 47 and space 48, 47 and 48. If you add those up, you're going to get the number 95 and the number 95 folks, when you go to the periodic table, it's this element right here called a mericeum. It's the one half. I've been showing this. It's one half of the I am that I am. This is the am. I am. It's iodine and americium, which ends up equaling the number 369. I've been showing that. But how about that, folks? This is just one. Let me keep going. Let me, let me support this with ironclad convincing evidence here, folks. Here's the sign with the sunglasses off. There it is with the sunglasses on. There's Roddy Piper putting them on for the first time. So the... The billboard, without the sunglasses on, it says, we're creating the transparent computing environment. So, of course, I'm going to decode that. Of course, the subtleties, 46 letters, that's tied to the tree of life, which is down here in hell. It's a total of 186. And it's not just any number, folks. Look at what element it's tied to. The 75th element called rhenium. 
75. And we go right back right there, folks. The timestamp added up equals the number 75. And then the signs expression, the billboard is linked to the 186 slash 70. How about that, folks? So again, the, folks, man's not doing this. Their mind is not their own. Here's another example. He's walking down the street. He looks up. Armisi's men's apparel. No independent thought. Glasses off. Glasses on. Notice the timestamp, 33 minutes and 33 seconds. Just the subtleties, 33 minutes and 37 seconds. And then when you put them side by side and you add those up, folks, together, it becomes the number 153. How many fish did the Christ and the apostles catch in the Bible? 153. How about that, folks? So what do you think that story is linked to? You're about to, I'm not going to keep supporting it, folks, but there it is. It's tied to this element right here, the G. OD element, the GD, gadolinium, which of course, this element right here, the funny thing about it, the humor in that element is, there it is right there. Look at what they use for the uh, icon because gadolinium, when you go read about the uses and properties, it's because they used to use this in television screens, <laughs> which is it's just kind of funny. We're talking about watching TV and being hypnotically in a trance with television. But there it is, folks. It's the 64th element. How many possible codons in our DNA? 64. How many squares in a chessboard? 64. That's the very reason why that's like the way it is. But there it is, the 153 based off of these two examples. So let's keep going, folks. Got more to show you. So sunglasses on. Here's another one. So this is my, my last one for this instance here close out sale and then sunglasses on consume sunglasses off close out sale sunglasses on consume so of course when you put those side by side you end up getting the number 83 the number 83 is tied to the element krypton which is we're going to be getting it folks this is a big deal in all of this Krypton, where Superman's from, the good guy, supposedly. Jesus Christ equals 36, by the way. But nonetheless, there it is. The 83 Krypton. Krypton is a 29. Yaldabaoth is a 29. And the big takeaway, folks, and we're going to be showing this a little bit more, but you see, Krypton comes from this word kryptos in Greek, and it means hidden. What's going on right here, folks, with these? What is going on? What's going on? Hidden, folks. Think, use, about, use your common sense and logic, folks. See, now there's three different examples all leading to something. And you mean, and people th still think man's doing this. I, do you realize you'd never get anything freaking done? So here are the subliminal messages in the movie. And, um, when I first started decoding They Live, I had found something on the internet and these were the main ones. I couldn't find it anymore, but uh, nonetheless, I wanted to show you. These are the main subliminal messages that I found on one website that was linked to the, I think it was the IMDB of They Live itself. And it was these 21 words. And look at what they add up to. The number 470. There's that 47 tied to the Tetragrammaton. The subtleties, there are 116 letters. 116 is tied to the 50th element called tin, which is why I have the tin alligator coming up as a topic, folks. Hang on to your seats on that one, folks. So let's get into some of the movie scenes. Some of the movie scenes, folks. So here's one. Roddy Piper grabs a pair of binoculars of the little homeless place that he's staying at, that he came into town and staying at. And he's observing across the street, there's a church and there's some commotion going on. And so he decides to get a pair of binoculars and check it out of what's going on. And so he's looking through binoculars and he notices that this guy right here who is in the camp, in the homeless camp that he's at, 
This guy right here, he's coming out with these boxes and they're loading this car up right here. And he's and they're frantically doing it. Now, if you observe everything in this, there's a lot of moving parts, again, that you'd have to consciously sit there and frame by frame, you'd have to make sure, especially like this, like we have to make sure that this license plate is exactly this on this car. Did they do that? Why would you do it? But see the takeaways folks, it's not just the license plate, but it's the number 88 through the binoculars. When you're looking through a set of binoculars, you see the eight right there? It's the eight. It's right there. I just thought that was really interesting. But the license plate right here, 2KRO476. So I, of course, naturally I'm going to decode that. And here is the breakdown using three different ciphers, all leading to the same exact expression in this reality in the code it's all leading back to the demiurge and yaldabaoth again they're, they're in these boxes they're trying to get out of the church these are, i think they're the sunglasses which will allow you to see bringing it into this car and trying to get a getaway out for the cops show up because they end up coming and pillaging this building but it's you know the license plate on this car through the English, 63, copper, 29, krypton, and demiurge in Yaldabaoth. The full reduction, 36, krypton, krypton, Yaldabaoth, demiurge. 30 through the Chaldean, zinc, which is 63, 63 is right back to this copper right there, which is 29, Yaldabaoth, and krypton, and demiurge. They're all in bed together, folks. They're all part of the code, all of it. There is no separation. And keep in mind, folks, you know, I'm mainly using the Chaldean. I mean, I know I'm showing three different expressions right here, but you can clearly see the connections, the strong ties and connections just off the freaking license plate, just off the license plate, folks. Here's another example. Here are the cops the flying the police helicopter over the church at night. And this is when they come raid it after they get the boxes out. Here's the number on the police helicopter. N1442, that's a 16. Of course, the word hell equals 16. The numeric string 16 in the string of pi, it occupies two digits, digit number 40 and digit number 41. Now, digit number 40, of course, is tied to zirconium, which is tied to Yaldabaoth because it's the 89. But when you add up 40 and 41, because 16 occupies both of those spaces, becomes 81, which leads you right back to the element Krypton. Right back to the car, Krypton, Yaldabaoth, Demiurge. It's all there, folks, all of it. It's all part of the code. The movies that man makes is just a micro of the macro. It's just an extension. It's like, leaves on a tree way up in the top just an extension of the trunk of the tree growing outward here's towards the end of the movie they live this is when they actually get to the new station 54 and they're doing a tour of it and this guy's doing the tour he, this guy was in the homeless camp with roddy roddy piper and this other guy and he's this is what he says here we have the brains to the whole operation. This is where they're beaming the signal off the top of the roof at Studio 54, New Station 54. And he say, he calls it a satellite. It's a satellite. What are satellites, folks? What's, what is Elon Musk and company putting up in the lower, lower orbits right now? It's satellites beaming things down to Earth. There's a lot to it, folks. There's a very big reason why 5G is coming into play. Total control. But there it is. Satellite's 29. Yaldabaoth is 29. Krypton is 29. It keeps going back to Krypton, Superman's home. Look at the timestamp. of when I put, well, Just as he said this, we're, here we have the brains to the whole operation. And then I paused it. There it is. One hour and 22 minutes and one second. What's 122? It's the element antimony. Antimony's icon that the Royal Society of Chemistry decided to use is the all-seeing eye of Horus. Think about it, folks. Satellite. We have the brains to the whole operation. The all-seeing 
seeing eye. Folks, there are no accidents. There are no coincidences. Everything is completely scripted with absolute mathematical precision. This is no exception. So he's talking about this satellite from news station 54, beaming it out to the whole entire world, controlling the world. And he mentions the word signal. So I paused the movie and I decoded signal and look at what it ends up equaling. The number 16, which I showed that was on the police helicopter. Signal is tied to the element Krypton. Si signal through the string of pi occupies digits 40 and 41. That's 81. That's tied to the 36 element called Krypton. And of course, it means hidden, the hidden signal the hidden signal. So here's the breakdown of Krypton really quickly. I showed through the Chaldean, it's 29 linked to Yaldabaoth, but there it is, folks. It's the 119. And, you know, when you go and look at the 119 through the periodic table, you're going to get to this element right here called tin. And, you know, a lot of people link it to Jupiter. It's all tied together, folks. There is no separation, none. But here's the 119. It's right there, folks. It's, it's most abundant, by the way. This is all the percentages of these atomic weights or masses. 119 is 32%. For good reason. Tied to Yaldabaoth and Krypton, which means to lie hidden. And here's the shot of them looking at the newscasters. Of course, guys with guns protecting it. And the 54, you know, here's another look at the 54 in the string of pi. It occupies two digits, 191 and 192. Now, osmium has both of those weights. I'm just showing the first one. But this is a very special element because this is otherwise known as the Wizard of Oz. Remember, the Wizard of Oz was behind a curtain, a green curtain. What is Jupiter? Green runs the heart chakra. And when they pulled the curtain aside, of course, Toto did that in The Wizard of Oz. It was just this little dude who was nothing. Think about it logically, what the story is trying to tell you. So when you really break it down, folks, and you really make heads or tails of this, this story of They Live is about them projecting a hypnotic trance slash spell through news and media through this cable 54 station and the 54 the very reason why it's not just the 54 now some of you are going to link the jesuits to it i know that but folks it goes way beyond that 54 when you really do it properly to get a really advanced extended aspect of the number it's linked to this element osmium and osmium is linked to this element xenon which is our x chromosomes 54 and then the 54 is tied into the manganese which is linked to the cow and us being cattle being herded for cattle in this movie they live if you go look at this movie and you go break it down here is this guy on television he's called the bearded man is played by John Lawrence, but he is coming on through the movie periodically, and that's what he's saying. They're dismantling the sleeping middle class. We are cattle. We're being bred for slavery. We could be pets. We could be food, but all we really are is livestock. Think about that, folks. Man is being, man's an experiment. They may be an apex predator, but there's something controlling us and using us for food. The louche or the ambrosia. But this 191 tied to the 54 is through numberempire.com. It's the 43rd prime. The 191 is the 43rd prime number. 43 is tied to the spider card, which is spinning a web. Think about it logically. What are they doing at this news station? They're casting a web over the world, trying to catch you in the spider's web. What do spiders do when they put you in the web? What do they do to insects? They eat them. Spider, otherwise known as the octopus, 
It's got eight legs. Octopus has eight legs. Tied to Yaldabaoth, folks. How about this? You know, this has nothing to do with They Live, but this is where it goes, folks. It, it connects to Studio 54, 1970s. Studio 54, one of the hot spots when the disco era was in play. There's a movie out on it, folks. I went and I started decoding that. I could have added this in there, but just I only have so much time to get this presentation out to you. But look at, look at the address of Studio 54. Now, again, the, the two guys that created this Studio 54, you think they're trying to mock you? Trying to pull the woolly over your eyes? Folks, they're being used. It's all part of the code. Look at the address. The full expression of the address of where Studio 54 is located. Notice the zip code in New York, New York. There's that 119. This is located in Hell's, Hell's Kitchen, New York, by the way. But there's that 137 tied to the angle of light. It's tied, it's the 33rd prime number. 26 letters, the G-O-D, there's subtleties in there, but you can't leave them out. Could have kept going with this. There's the, look at, there it is, 54. I mean, that's why they call it Studio 54, because it was on 54th Street. But again, do you think they sat down and said, well, you know, we got to get it at this building and all these 54s and it's going to equal 137? Folks, that's ludicrous thinking that. But here we go with the 33. So let's get into the next topic called lizard control. Lizard control. And this was taken off of John Carpenter's Twitter account on January 3rd, 2017. And I'll read it. You can follow along. He said, They Live is about yuppies and unrestrained capitalism. It has nothing to do with Jewish control of the world, which is slander and a lie. Now, I'll leave it up to you what you want to believe. But pointing the finger at a group of people when the people are being used. I mean, you could do that if you want to. A lot of people do that. That's totally fine. I like to go as close to the source as I possibly can. And I'm not saying this is not true. I'm not saying it is true. It's going to be completely up to you what you want to believe. But I'm going to break down the timestamp of when this was put out there, folks. And let me blow your doors off right now. Forget about what the message is. Let's break down the timestamps. Here is the day that John Carpenter put this out about this movie and it had nothing to do with any kind of control of the world by any groups. January 3rd, 2017. The January 3rd card, folks, is the Jack Spades. It's not just any card, folks. It's the 50th card in the deck. And what's the 50th card in the deck for the medicine cards? It's the alligator. So when he says it has nothing to do with Jewish control of the world, clearly if you go by the timestamp, you can see what it contro what's controlling everything. You can clearly, folks, you can see it in this context of the story. In the context of the story. What about the timestamp of the, the time, 7.29 p.m.? Well, when you take, uh, get out your calculators, if you add up seven and 29, you're going to get the number 36. But folks, it just, it gets funny. This is why it gets absolutely hilarious. And I can't do anything else but laugh at some of this stuff because this shit's funny, if you ask me. It's really funny when you decode as much as I do. Seven plus 29 is 36. It's tied to this card right here called the lizard. Two reptilian cards, the lizard, the alligator, right off of the timestamp that John Carpenter clearly told you what it's about. And behind the hidden signals, this is what I believe the whole movie was about, the reptiles. <laughs> it's really, so are there reptiles living amongst us? I believe so. But they're living out their purpose just like we are. I'm not excusing any of their behavior. Folks, you got to realize whatever's running this world temporarily right now, they have no heart. They have no compassion. That's the way they're made. No heart, no compassion. They're not like humans, what it appears to be. 
So there you go. They live 30. Direct tie to the word reptilian. I just, it's just funny. <laughs> It's just funny. And of course, you know, Demiurge is 30 and we're going to get into that. But here's the breakdown of what John Carpenter said in his Twitter feed on January 3rd, 2017. Notice the subtleties, folks. It's 111 letters and it's 25 words. And we're going to get into that 25. Make no mistake about it. The subtleties can't leave them out though. But the whole statement is a 420. Naturally, I'm going to bring it into the string of pi. 420, here's where it starts to appear at the 701st decimal digit of pi. You can add up all three, 701, 702, 703. You can get another layer, folks. It just keeps going. But 701 in numberempire.com right below. Look at, look at what prime number it is. It's not just any prime number, folks. It's the 126 prime number. 126 is tied to this element, which is called iodine, which is I am that I am. I showed the am earlier, the 95. Here's the I. Iodine. I mean, folks, we say this all the time. I this, I that. I want to go here. I want to do this. I, 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 I. There it is, folks. 53 is Saturn and Mars in one instance. But how about that, folks? More layers to this. And man, man's coding this, though. Some people think man's coding this. Ludicrous thinking. What about the number 420 when you get into some advanced decoding? This is trigonometry, measuring the sine and cosine waves of the actual numbers themselves. That 420, there is the sine and cosine wave at the very top. Here it is. It's 0.82 and 0 0.56 that's the 85 or the 58 that's going to lead to puppet master but when you add them up folks when you when you add them up you get the number 131 and it's not just any number folks it's tied to the 54th element which is called xenon what do we what do we show already on this this is this is the news station 54 where they were broadcasting the signal folks and it's tied to the statement John Carpenter made saying it's not about Jewish control of the world. It's about yuppies and unrestrained capitalism. And it's led to, it leads to the 54 again. What are the odds, folks? And did John Carpenter sit down and use the sine and cosine waves to mock you? There it is, folks. Pink Floyd, I mentioned this, Dark Side of the Moon. There's a song called Brain Damage. Think about that song, Brain Damage. There's someone in my head, but it's not me. It's 131 tied to Xenon. And of course, that word is tied to the Greek word Xenos, which means stranger. You know the little voice in your head, the stranger in your head that owns you? Yeah, because you're just playing out your script, folks, through the code. And, you know, then you get into... The Draconian. Let me start with this one here. Here's, I got them out of order, but here's the release date. We'll just get a little bit of the bio of They Live. The release date of this movie is November 4th, which is 11 4, which is tied to Indium and 49 and down in a hole. I didn't even include that, but nonetheless, it's not just any card, November 4th. It's the Three Diamonds card. And what card number is it? the 29th card that folks look at the sink. Okay. Here it is. November 4th, the release date. Let me show you the card. Here we go. November 4th is the three diamonds card. The three diamonds card is the 29th card in the deck. Look at what the Gnostic Demiurge equals in numerology. 29. How about that, folks? The release date of this movie is tied to the 29th card, which is tied to the Gnostic Demiurge Jalaboth. And I've, this is not the first time. But there is, I decoded Yaldabaoth, and of course, Yaldabaoth runs the Vatican. It, clearly, this is, that's what's going on. And then you bring in the Vatican, and you realize this, the, the whole purpose of that, and control, and... 
you, you, people think that there are reptilians running the Vatican. Well, hello? Is it starting to make sense to you now, folks? You can clearly see when you syncretize everything, what's going on? So Yaldemoth, right here, bottom right, 29, top left, the word draconian. This is in my decode of Yaldemoth. 29's copper, tied to the Boaz and Yachin, the two pillars, tied to the temple of Jerusalem and Israel and all that stuff. Folks, it's all in the script. It's all about control. 29, not just any number. It's the 10th prime number. What's the 10th letter in the Hebrew alphabet? It's the Yod. God of the Bible, the yod heh vah it's, it's the same. It's the Gnostic Demi. It's all the same. It's all meant to control you. Breaking out of the hypnotic trance is not paying attention to that stuff anymore. You don't need it. Religion is dead. Let's say that loud and clear. Religion is D-E-A-D, -E dead. No purpose. It's a control mechanism. It's a control business. Keep you a slave. I mean, folks, look at the sinks on this. 29 decimal digits into pi. There it is. Look at what it equals. All these 29 digits added up, 138, tied to the 57th element called Lanthanum. What does it mean? Lie hidden. What does Krypton mean? Hidden. It's all about hiding, 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 hiding. Well, there's no more hiding anymore, folks, with this code. We're clearly seeing the code. You can see it now. See what's running the show. So now we get into eight o'clock in the morning and the short story that they live was taken from by John Carpenter. It was by Ray Nelson. Here it is. Ray Nelson, of course, you know, being born on October 3rd. And folks, there's so many things I could have did, but again, time permitting. But what year did this come out? 1963. What is 63? Copper. So there it is, folks. It's right there. Copper. And then, you know, when you syncretize, you look at the English, keep your eyes on the English. 63. It's, it's right. It's the God of the Bible right there, folks. No separation. Y'all do both, folks. I mean, it's right there. You can't miss it. So here's right off of Ray Nelson's website, and here's the short story, 8 o'clock in the morning. And when you look at that, here it is. If you want to read it, it's only six pages. But there's a lot of nuggets in here that I was finding. You know, they instead of the visitors, they call them the fast. He calls them the fascinators right there, the fascinators. But this is really interesting. This is where the, the They Live movie came from. And it was called 8 o'clock in the morning, and it's number 90. Now, what is the 90 tied to? Well, when you go to the periodic table, and you go to the 40th element called zirconium, which means gold-colored. Remember, we're being mined for our gold. When you go down to the oxidation states and isotopes, it's going to give you the clues. Here it is. 89, 90, 91. This 91 is battery. There's the 90. Right next to the number 89. And then keep your eyes on that English, 89. Folks, 89 and 29, it's, it's right there. You, you can't miss it. And it's tied to this 8 o'clock in the morning where the short story was the birth of They Live, the movie, by this guy, Ray Nelson. Right there. I mean, there's the piece of the short story. And it was George Nada. In the movie, Roddy Piper was John Nada, but his name was George Nada. And when you do the numerology on that, folks, remember, this short story came out in 1963. This is, again, showing you that man could never code this. You got to use your common sense. Something a lot of people don't have, it seems. Not you, but, you know, most people that I see. This, this short story written by Ray Nelson, which inspired John Carpenter to come out with They Live, came out in 1963. 1963. 
and then the the main character of the story was George Nada which was played by Roddy Piper look at what it equals in numerology 36 tied to the lizard card all about the lizard people the reptilians these cards by the way came out 25 years later in 1988 and the people that created i do you think they were sitting down and they just read the short story by ray nelson and they're like well you know the guy who put the sunglasses on and saw the lizard people his name in numerology equals the number 36 and since this movie came out in the same year as this these cards do you think that maybe these people were in cahoots with john carpenter do you think that's possible folks use your common sense and logic that was my humor by the way the answer is absolutely not too many moving parts for man to ever code this so let's get into roddy piper the main star of they live he went by john nada in the movie in the uh, credits it was just nada but then john carpenter said his name was john nada look at what it equals folks <laughs> 29 linking once again to the gnostic demiurge yaldabaoth which goes by the octopus the spider the worm lion showed that in pi so here's the bio of roddy piper notice the year he was born 19 what 54 you think they casted him because they knew they were going to put new station 54 and he was born in 1954 do you think that has any you think that was the very reason why they casted him well got to find a guy that's born in 1954 because the signal is going to be coming from new station 54. born on april 17th here's his card folks it's the four diamonds card showing that once again i showed that earlier tied to the walls of jericho and the very reason why i had started this decode walls of jericho the song reptile that album came out on december 1st which was the four diamonds card a direct match of roddy piper's birthday halloween the band has nothing to do with they live but it has everything to do with they live because it's in the code his birth card is the four diamonds his death card passed away on july 31st it's the ten hearts four diamonds and ten hearts it's the 410 it's the 30th card and the 10th card let me go to that and show you four diamonds 30th card go over to the hearts 10th card 30 and 10. if you get out your calculators and add that up what are you going to get 40. there's that 40th element what is it zirconium meaning gold colored what is that tied to yaldabaoth 89 and 90 are right next to one another and it's right there the original story of this movie is a 90. tied right next to the 89 folks you can't make this stuff up man it's not coding this Man's being used to play out the code. Even if there are reptilians living amongst us, there are sharks living amongst us. There are a ton of predators living amongst us. Some hide, some don't. Some people believe in Bigfoot. I've never seen one before. Maybe they exist, maybe they don't. But it certainly, if it does exist, it's very elusive and it hides. It's the Gnostic Demiurge again, folks. I mean, think about it. How is this possible? This guy's birth to death stamp using the cards ends up becoming the element zirconium linked to the gnostic demiurge which is which is what this whole agenda is all about i mean folks the, here's his birth card folks Here, just another example four diamonds april 17th 30th card i mean there's that 417 we're gonna i'm gonna get into that 417 in a minute by the way because we're gonna get into that in superman just remember that number 417 
But there it is, folks. The 30th card, four diamonds, reptilian, demiurge. This whole movie's about reptilians. The demiurge is 30. Folks, I mean, you can't make this stuff up. And this is the main star with his birth card tied to that? Folks, man's being used. Let's go a little bit further. Here's his full name in numerology. Roderick George Toombs. It's a 78. It's really interesting because John Carpenter, the man who was the producer and director of this movie, his name is a direct match. It's also a 78. How about that, folks? The main star and the director slash producer of the movie is a 78, both of them. Now, what is the significance of the 78? Hold on to your seats, folks. In the string of pi, in the string of pi, 78 digits in past the three point, here are the 78 digits, all added up, 373. Are you ready for this one, folks? A little drum roll if you could, in your mind. Play the drum roll, 373 is once again tied to Yaldabaoth because you see the 373 it's not just any prime number it's the 74th prime number which is tied to tungsten which is the wolfram the wolf tied to the christ and the crucifixion and the arsenic but the big tie-in folks is found right here it's the 29 the 29th digit appears at the 186th and 187th decimal digit in the string of pi. If you get out your calculators, 186 plus 187 is going to give you a total of 373. 300. And 73 based off the 78 both of these guys have through their names and people think man is actually consciously coding this to mock you and to pull the woolly over your eyes I'm gonna keep bombing that folks by the way if you're somebody who's a fan of those kinds of words I'm gonna keep bombing that and you may not like me you may think I'm an asshole I really don't care I get enough persecution from idiots out there who put me down and put my work down and then I can clearly show you what's going on here, folks. Man's not coding this. November 4th, 1988 is the day this movie came out. Look at the total numerology of that date. 66. 66 through the string of pi. Here's the 78th decimal digit. 78, John Carpenter, Roddy Piper. 78, 78, 373, 373, tied to 29 and the Gnostic Demiurge, Yaldabaoth. They live, all controlled by the Demiurge, the stories, all controlled by the code and man's just expressing the code. John Carpenter himself, born on January 16th. January 16th is also written 1 slash 16. There's the 116. I told you Tin has several weights. There is another one of them. 116.902. 50 is the alligator. Uh, the alligator, folks. We're going we're gonna to get into the tin alligator in a minute. That's why I got tin alligator. Here's John Carpenter's birth card. The Jack Diamonds. What's the Jack Diamonds? It's the Jack in the Box. So not only you have John Carpenter with the Jack Diamonds and the Jack in the Box, but also Roddy Piper has the four diamonds, which is the 30th card, which is tied to the rabbit down in the hole. We all become Jack in the Box, folks. Man's being used, folks. It's the only way to logically look at this. So let's look at Superman, shall we? What does Superman have to do with this? It's got everything to do with it. So it has everything to do with Krypton. Now folks, it's very possible that we have some alien beings here on Earth that came from another planet. They came through the wormhole. 
You know, that science fiction really may be true. And this movie's telling you the story. I mean, folks, this when this Man of Steel movie came out, this suit that he's wearing, Henry, this is the main star of Superman currently, he's wearing the suit. Look, look at what it looks like, folks. Reptilian skin. Scaly skin, folks. And Krypton is derived from the word Kryptos, which is from the Greek. Look at what it equals, folks. 126. And it just so happens that Henry Cavill, the main star of Man and Steel, when they first introduced this reptilian-like skin, this scaly skin suit, he's born on May 5th, which in the leap years, look how many days it is on the calendar. 100 and 27. Folks, your jaw should be on the floor. This is ridiculous, this code. Man could never code this, folks. Not at this level. May 5th is 55. That's Secret Destroyer. You know, remember, Jesus Christ equals 36, folks. It goes way deep. It's all control. Part of this game is to wake up from the control. If we have any free will, and I use a big if, I believe part of that could be waking up from the, from the hypnotic trance, realizing the control tactics that are going on. So what about that number 36 in Krypton, tied to Superman's birthplace, tied to the Yaldabaoth character? Krypton and Yaldabaoth both equal the number 29. Well, let's look at the sine and cosine waves. The footprint of the number 36 and the frequencies in the game of life. Sine and cosine wave, look at what it is. Point nine nine point one two. It's point nine and point one. Ninety one is a battery. But when you add up the total sine and cosine wave digits, you get the number one hundred and forty. What's what's pi again, folks? Three point what? Three point one four one. Tied to this element. The goddess of agriculture goes way deep if you go into the Greek mythology. Folks, there's just so many layers to this, this code. It's the puppet master. Puppet master equals 58, folks. I mean, you can't... You... Let's keep going. So there's this, you know, sculpture right out in front of the Central Intelligence Agency, the CIA in Langley, Virginia. It's called Kryptos. That's what Krypton means, by the way. I wonder what this whole entire ordeal actually means. Because they have, like, there's been four different codes and the only, there's only three of them that have been solved, supposedly. But what does this message really mean? Is this got any tie into the Georgia Guidestones or am I just really stretching? But anyway, it's named Kryptos from Krypton, tied to Henry Cavill and Superman and the 126. And remember, the I am is the 126. So let's break down Henry Cavill. Here's his full birth name, Henry William Dalglish Cavill. Dalglish, interesting name, but it's 82. Of course, Demiurge equals 82 in the English. And when you do his alchemology, and I, I, have, I didn't put the elements here because it would just take up too much space, but it's taking all of the, the letters of his name and then bringing all the elements of the periodic table and adding them all up, boron, 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 helium, hydrogen, all of them. And then using the trusty calculator, I, couldn't, I didn't even have space to do it here. But it becomes the number, his alchemology. And I've shown this how, how accurate this is with, you know, uh, Keanu Reeves and the reason why he was named Neo because he's tied to Neodymium, his alchemology. You should know what your alchemology is. But his is the 172.28. And it's tied through the string of pi. It's found at the 100. What's 138? Tied dr draconian. Tied to Lanthanum, the one that means to lie hidden. Draconian, Yaldabaoth. Folks, it's all part of the story. And then when you add up the three digits that occupy those 
spaces the 172 is found at the, the string of pi 138 through 140 get out your calculators folks 138 plus 139 plus 140 equals the number 417 what's roddy piper's birthday 417 what's lucifer's numbers 714 to go even further, when you add up 172 and 28, you get the number 200. And if you know the story of the fallen angels, there are 200 of them. If you know that story. So is this movie telling us that some, this, the fallen angel story is about invaders from a different dimension coming down here and invading our space? Quite possible. So let's get into the Superman comic. <laughs> this is, you know, I mean, you know, of course it's Cal L and all that kind of stuff, but this comic book was one of the most successful ever to come out. And the first appearance of Superman was on April 18th, 1938. What's 38? It's tied to Lanthanum, to lie hidden. 38 is tied to Queen Diamonds and there's a lot of layers to this. But notice the April 18th. Let me show you that. Here's April. You go down to the number 18. There it is. It's the three diamonds card. What is the three diamonds card? It's the 29th card in the deck. What's 29, folks? It gets, it gets monotonous, doesn't it? I mean, I keep showing the same things. But you can clearly see, I mean, if you use your common sense and logic, folks, see, we're told that this is the suit, this is the guy that's going to come save you. And the suit, we're talking about they live and reptilians and aliens living amongst us. And this, this came out in 1938, 50 years before they live came out. 50's tied to 10 and we're going to get into 10 in a minute, but... <clears throat> when you look at the, the April 18th, the first appearance of Superman, April 18th, not only is it the 29th card, but it's the 108th and 109th day of the year. 109 is 29. 29 is Yaldabaoth. Well, folks, do you see what I'm saying? It's insane. Here are the two guys that created Superman. Joseph Schuster and Jerry Siegel. These are the two guys responsible. Look at what their names equal in numerology, folks. 88. What year did they live come out? 19 what? 88. It's tied to Yttrium and the Y. 39. It's all tied together, folks. All of it. This one completely blew my doors off. Their birthdays. Joseph Schuster, born on July 10th. His card is the five diamonds. Jer Jerry uh, Siegel, October 17th. Five of clubs. So you have the 55 right here, folks. 55 and... The 55 is linked to this element right here called iron. Iron. 26 is the G-O-D. G-O-D equals 26. 26 is tied to the yod heh vah -Heh in the original Hebrew spelling. The Israelite God of the Bible tied to iron. When did it come out? The Iron and Bronze Age. What is steel made out of, folks? It's an alloy of iron. What is Superman known as? The man of what? The man of steel. These two guys who created the character Superman, their birthdays and their birth cards equal the number 55 tied to the iron element, which is an alloy of steel or steel's an alloy of iron. How about this, folks? Do you think that these guys got together because they knew their birth cards and they knew it was linked to iron and they knew they were going to call this guy the man of steel because steel is an alloy of iron? Do you think they actually consciously knew that? 
No freaking way. Man's not coding this. I just have one slide on this. This is, and I may end up decoding this show, but here's Rick and Morty. And I showed this on my social media. Some of you are fans of the show, but it's got snakes in there and reptilians. And it's just, it's, again, it's just part of the code. Rick and Morty 36. The lizard card is 36. The release date of Rick and Morty, the original release date, December 2nd. Here's the December 2nd card. Here's December. Here's the second. It's once again that three diamonds card. What's the three diamonds card? It's the 29th card on the deck. What's 29? Yaldabaoth. Yaldabaoth keeps leading to Krypton and the lizard and the reptilians and the demiurge. And it's linked to the parasite. You know, is Yaldabaoth the demiurge that created this reality? Or is it an invader of this reality? I don't know. But clearly when you look at the layers here, I mean, the word parasite's 89, Yaldabaoth is 89. Parasite's 25. The number 25 appears at the 89th decimal digit. 89 and 90. And remember, 8 o'clock in the morning was 90. It's right. It's all tied to the 25 in Parasite. The, the whole movie they live is about alien invasion. They're parasites. I mean, actually, all human beings are parasites. But in this case, trying to use us as slaves. Part of the game. So let's get into the last topic. Thanks for sticking with me, folks. I know this has been a long one, but this has been such an important decode. And thanks for sticking with my passion and maybe me being an asshole a little bit, but, you know, I get passionate about this stuff. More and more people need to see this code. And, we, and so, so the last topic is the tin alligator. And it starts really uh, with... That 50 card, the alligator. Remember, we're talking reptiles. We're talking they live, the reptilians. This is tied to the Georgia Guidestones. If you haven't seen my decode on the Georgia Guidestones, please check it out. Reducing the population to 500 million, having a new set of rules, more control. No, thank you. Alligator is the 50th card. Tin is the 50th element. Tied to Jupiter now, by the way. Jupiter is Zeus. Zeus is Jesus. Just remember that. Krypton in the English, the 119. There's the 119 in Tin. Krypton and Yaldabaoth in the Chaldean are 29. You can't, folks, you can't make this stuff up. You just can't. So let's get into the tin. Uh, this topic is the tin alligator. And of course, this one, this one floored me. This was a surprise because I had no inkling of decoding the tin man from the Wizard of Oz. But I want you to remember something, folks, with this piece right here. In this story of the Wizard of Oz, this character played by this guy, and of course his name is Jack. He went by Jack, not his birth name, but he went by Jack, the Jack in the box. This character, the Tin Man, what was he after? He was after his heart, a heart. He didn't have one. He had no emotions, no feelings, no compassion. Or at least it, that's, you know, the, the whole, I'm after, I need a, I want a heart. I don't have a heart. What does a heart do? It gives you compassion. It makes you a human being. Is it possible, folks, that the movie they live is about reptilians that came here that do not have a heart? They don't have compassion. They just want to control you. Part of the game. Is that what's going on really behind the scenes? The Tin Man, after the heart. And this guy, Jack Haley, his name was John Joseph Haley Jr. But he played the Tin Man. And again, Tin is, it, the reason why I'm showing this is because Tin is linked to the alligator. We're talking about reptilians. An alligator is a reptile tied to Yaldabaoth, the Demir. I've been showing all this throughout this whole decode. 
And the Tin Man, look at when this guy was born, folks. This is this blew my freaking doors off. Bl blew me away when I saw this. I had no, I wasn't even planning on doing that. But when I, when I was looking at Tin and the Tin Alligator, I'm like, wait a minute, Tin, the Tin Man, it popped into my head. This guy was born on August freaking 10th. Look at what his card is, folks. It's the three diamonds card. The three diamonds, the 29th card in the deck linked to Yaldabaoth, folks. Unbelievable. Well, believable. There it is, Tin, folks. The Tin Man. Because this is what the story is telling us. That maybe whatever created this reality comes down here and becomes man. Likes to have its hands in all the cookie jars. But it's an alligator. It consumes. It's a predator. So I started to decode the alligator, you know, and then the, the word, and this is where, this is where, you know, hey, listen, again, I'm not trying to uh, be anti anything, but, you know, the God Allah, alligator, you can you, folks, there are no accidents. It's all tied together, all of it. And the word alligator, when you go and do the search, it, they said it, it's probably the words El Legardo, which is Spanish for the lizard. Now here it is, folks. Look at what it is. 29. Could have been any other number. But alligator comes from the Spanish term, which means the lizard. It's 29, and it's a once again tied to Alaboth. Now, folks, what's fascinating is that when you look at this word right here, El, in Spanish, it convert. What does it mean in English? The. The. When you go and you look at this word, the. Not only is it a 33, but in the Chaldean, it's a 14. And it's tied to these. Keep your eye on that Chaldean. It's tied to this word, time. It's tied to this word, the G-O-D. It's tied to this word called Satan. All connected, folks. All of it. So when you have this word L, which is tied to the yod heh vah -Heh, electricity, Elohim, it, it means the And when we say the, we end up having a word after that, the car, the house. Every time you say the, you instantly say God this, God that, through the words you speak. That's how this game works, the spells. It's already in the code, folks. It's already in the code. That's why it says the lizard, El Legardo. El is the 53, the iodine element. Elohim. So every time you say the this and the that, you're absolutely speaking a spell and you're connecting the Elohim. Whatever created this reality, whatever created the words, the spells we speak, it owns and operates all the code, all of it. And is it this character right here or did this character infiltrate our world and it's a invader, a parasite? Because it's known as the, the, the worm lion, the octopus, the spider, the alligator. This is tied to the Georgia Guidestones, folks. Tied directly to the Georgia Guidestones. I mean, look at what the word alligator is, folks, in the English. It's the 25. This is a big deal right here. And 25, it, of course, equals and links to the word parasite. It's also the word 9-6 equals 25, the yin-yang. Yin-yang is the demiurge, but it's linked to this element right here. Show this. Manganese means magnet. There it is, cable 54. There's the 54. Tied to xenon. The X chromosomes are X chromosomes. I mean, there's a lot of syncs right here. If you pause this and read through this, I mean, it's it gets ridiculous of the description of an alligator. And again, you know, folks, is, is someone sitting down with Wikipedia and doing this consciously to make all these things match up, or are they just being used? I think they're being used. 
But here, I mean, look at this. The average weight and length of an alligator, 360 kilograms. What's 36? It's Krypton. What's 79? It's gold, gold currency. And you got Pi right there. Folks, it's just, you can keep going with this and reading and reading. Look at this. Um, when you go, the American alligator who lived the longest, what the name was Saturn. I mean, someone could have done that on purpose. But what would be the point? You know, it was born in 1936. That's Krypton, 36. And then look at the age that it died at, 83 or 84. What's 83 and 84, the atomic weight of? Krypton. Or Krypton, sorry, is, is eight, uh, yeah, 83 and 84. Krypton, tied to rubidium and the jack-in-the-box. Folks, man's being used. I mean, I, I don't know how else to continually say this to all of you, but... So let's get, actually, I do have one more topic. Let's get into the last topic called V, which stands for the visitors. And it was this show back in the 1980s, 1983. I remember watching this when I was a kid. I was infatuated with it. And it was about reptilians. Nothing has nothing to do with they live, but it has everything to do with they live. And it was written and directed by this guy, Kenneth Johnson. Here's his full name in numerology, folks. I mean, are you serious? Really? Really? You, do you see that right there, folks? So either this character is the reptilian that came down and that's ruling over society and is part of the fallen angels and the fallen angels are the reptiles. Maybe that's true. Or this is the demiurge and just this is all part of the story. And part of the code is there are really reptilians living amongst us that run and control the monetary system and, you know, the governments and all the, the, the corrupt stuff out there that we don't need to rule over man. Part of the demise of the world because the world needs something to bring it down. It's like your body. Your body has an immune system, but it has bacteria and viruses that's trying to enter it all the time. What is the purpose of those things? It, it challenges your body for your immune system to get. Think about it, folks. Just observe your body, the inside of your body and the, the machinations of your body and how it works. Constantly being invaded by parasites and viruses and bacterias just inside your body alone. That's the your micro. And we're talking about the world we live in as a macro. And then the movies are the micro of our macro. Just, it's just, it's layers, fractals. So here's the original miniseries. Here's Diana. I remember her as the character. And here's the skin being ripped off. And, you know, it's fa fascinating because this, this V stands supposedly stands for the visitors but but there it is on the only element that carries that letter v it's the vanadium and it's not just the 23rd element and of course we know crown blood and history equals 23 in numerology but look at what its weight is folks it just gets really it's it gets funny to me anyway i mean if this stuff really existed that's not funny but it just gets funny that here's the here it is again the 50 the v Vanadium, the crown, and the, the tie-ins to all that. I mean, it just gets really funny. And I think this is my, I got two slides left. Here's, here's the big tie-in with the 50. Here's the big tie-in with the 50 in pi. And where's the 50 found? Well, it occupies two spaces, 31 and 32. And get out your calculators. 31 plus 32 is 63. And you see 63 is tied to copper and copper is tied to, once again, Yaldabaoth. And, you know, remember the copper is tied to the pillars in Boaz and Yachin. You, then you get into um, the Temple of Jerusalem, which is tied to theology in the Bible. And then it's also tied to Jewish mysticism and the Kabbalah system. It's, they're all tied together, folks. All of it. There's no separation. There's no separation. And, you know, we have the, the 50 here tied to tin, and then the, the lower form of that is the boron, because there's the weight of that. And, you know, 
the five is the busiest number and you know in the single digits it's the five man becomes the five so is this telling us that the demiurge perhaps Yaldabaoth, whatever created this reality tied to the yo the yo vahe yahweh all that stuff all of them Mar all the gods the marduk and ball and all that stuff they're all just ex war the wardrobe of whatever created this reality through the code um comes down and becomes man and gets to experience life as man i mean i've shown it and go watch my decode on the longest home run recorded i mean it's i got the tallest dog coming out i got the longest golf golf ball he ever hit it's all coded it's all scripted man's not doing anything man is being used through the avatars and it seems that whatever created this reality likes to come down here whenever it wants to experience life so this is my last slide folks and this is the two gentlemen that were the discoverers of krypton and xenon remember xenon is 54 which is the news station that was broadcasting the signal xenon is the voice in your head krypton is superman and yaldabaoth and you know here's the guy sir william ramsey who was one half of the discovery of that and look at what his birth card is. He was born on October 2nd. Think about this, folks. This is the guy who discovered the noble gases received the Nobel Prize. It's a big freaking deal of these elements, helium, neon, krypton, all the noble gases, krypton and xenon. This guy has a birth card. That's the 29th card in the deck. What are the odds you think of that being the case? When I've just been talking about Krypton and Xenon throughout this entire presentation. This guy has the 29th card in the deck. His co-partner, Morris Travers, who, you know, was the co-founder of, or the co-discoverer of these noble gases. His birth card is the 33rd card in the deck, the seven diamonds, the 33rd card in the deck. And they're both diamonds. And, you know, when you bring the three and the seven together, you get the 37, which, you know, the 37, folks, is the jack in the box. It's, it's the jack diamonds. It just, folks, it just goes so deep. And to me, it just, it just proves and supports that this world we're living in is completely scripted and rigged. And even if there are reptilians living amongst us, it's part of the code. It's part of the game. That's just the way it is, you know? So, folks, what is it you saw during this presentation? This is a very long presentation. I got like an hour and a half in my voice expression and then the intro in here. So, quite a long one, but this is probably some of the most important information I feel I've ever discovered so far. And, um, and it's going to be up to you on what you believe to be the truth. But what is it you saw during this presentation? I'd love to hear your observational points on this decode. I really, really do. So, so folks, that's all I got for today. My name is Logan. This is Decode Your Reality. And I thank each and every one of you for your support, your Patreons. Until next time, folks, we'll see you later.